Hi, I'm Doug Reeves, and today I'd like to talk to you about student engagement. It's one of the greatest concerns that educators around the world have. That's true in live classroom instruction, and it has been particularly true during virtual instruction. Some kids, either physically or metaphorically, have their head in the desk. They're just checked out. They may be present, or they may have logged on, but they're not engaged in class. And one way that we know that we can get students engaged in class is to radically change the interaction between student and teacher. The formula for disengagement is for the teacher to talk, 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 and we have no idea if the students are engaged or not. Some of them can even fake engagement by ostensibly looking at the teacher, but who knows what's happening. Maybe underneath the desk, they're playing with their cell phone. Maybe they're listening to something on their ear pods. Maybe they're taking notes that have nothing to do with a lecture at hand, but we won't know that if we don't have effective checks for engagement. So let me tell you what I do when I visit classrooms. If I ever have the honor of being in your classroom, I don't sit in the back and take notes. I sit next to a student and I ask him really sophisticated questions like, what are we doing? What comes next? And I want to be able to tell you, hey, I talked to five students and four out of five could tell me exactly what the lesson was. That's really a great level of engagement. When I come back next time, I'd really like to see five out of five. And, and I asked three students what comes next and two out of three were able to tell me exactly what comes next. Man, that's great time management. But the third one said, I don't know, I have to wait for the teacher to tell me, which leads to a lot of downtime. So next time I come back, I want every student to know what comes next. Student engagement is all about knowing what we're doing, knowing what comes next. So I'm focused exactly on the learning for that particular class. Moreover, teachers can ask engaging questions by asking not just what's the answer, but how do you know? always a follow-up question. And even if they have the wrong answer, I can ask them about what's an example of things that I know are not true so that I can take steps toward the right answer. When we have opinion pieces, I can ask not only what is your point of view, but what's a different point of view? And have students become more empathetic, not only on an emotional level, but also on an intellectual level to understand arguments that are counter to their own. And when we look at a set of data, maybe in a science class, Yes, I want them to interpret the data, but at a more sophisticated level, at a higher level of engagement, I want to ask them, what's another inference that you could draw from that data? You know, I've seen this done with little kids in the primary grades and with advanced science students in high school, to look at the very same piece of information and talk about how people could draw different conclusions. That is critical thinking and great engagement at its finest. One final note on engagement. If you're going to do engagement, you got to figure out how we get every student on the edge of their seat. And you know who does that brilliantly? Kindergarten teachers, first grade teachers. How do they do it? They don't call on the same student all the time who has their hand raised. They use equity sticks. Equity sticks are all the students with their names in a stick and randomly they pull out names so everybody has an equal opportunity to be called upon. They're all on the edge of their seats. Friends, I know middle school, high school, college teachers doing the same thing. Now, you don't have to ham it up with sticks, though it's not a bad idea to remind you of what they look like. You can do random calls, but the key is this. You don't rely on raised hands. The rule in my classroom is you raise your hand to ask a question, never to answer a question. When it comes time for students to answer a question, there's always an equal probability for everybody being called on. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Doug, they might be put in the spot. They might have an emotional meltdown. You can avoid that. We can always have phone a friend. We can have, hey, take a minute of think time. We can say, hey, it's okay to give a partial answer. But you wanna know what's not okay is to have your head in the desk snoring, either in my class or in virtual learning, not paying attention. I want everybody to have an equal opportunity to be engaged. That's what leads to high engagement. And if we'll do that, frankly, it's not only better learning, it's more fun to teach. That's what I would hope all of you would do. And by the way, I hope you consider doing that at your next faculty meeting, because adult engagement is as important as student engagement. So administrators, I'm talking to you. Don't just read announcements. Make sure that we have active engagement. Make sure that we call on people randomly. Make sure that everybody is on the edge of their seat, just like a great classroom would be, so that we have active adult engagement as surely as we desire active student engagement.